What's up guys, this is Forest Knight, and today is February 1st, 2017, also known as Day 10 of 100 Days of Code, and today I finished the Dream Lister app. Now, it's not polished up exactly how I want it, but it's good enough to get familiar with core data, inserting, deleting, modifying, uh, whatever else we do with it, moving as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'll show you exactly what it does and what we've implemented and some problems that we ran into. And then after I'll show you the code. So let's go ahead and check out the app. So here's the Dreamlister app. We have the newest tab and under the newest tab we have all of our information. Now a lot of these are repeats because I didn't take out the information. So basically when I load up this app, it'll have three stock items, Tesla, Bose headphones and MacBook Pro. And every time I rebuild it, it'll add them again. That's why there's so many. Just ignore that. I left them in there just because I wanted some things in here to scroll you know, during this, uh, this deal right here, this video. So let me show you a little bit of what we've done. So first off, I can click on this and whatever cell I want, I can click on it and I can edit this. So I can edit right here. I can make it say whatever I want, whatever I want, <laughs> literally. And I can change the price, of course, I could change the details. Another thing that we implemented is that I can change the image. So when I click on the image, it brings up a camera roll. Uh, you know, the first time you bring it up, it'll ask if I'm able to access your camera roll. I've already said yes, so this app is good to go in my camera roll. I only have five images, stock images, so it's not really gonna match up to the item name, especially since the item name is whatever I want. But a problem we ran into is that when I would click on the image, it would work, but I'd have to hit cancel and it would come back and you know the image would be there, good to go. But something that we implemented was dismissed function, or not exactly dismissed function, but we're able to have the image picker be dismissed. So right now, that's the stock image, so let's click on this, and once I click on it, you'll see that this goes away, and then we have the image there, and it fits into whatever box we have here, the image view we have here. And I can select the store, change it, and then save item. So as you can see, that's what we have. Um, I'm able to click on this and go ahead and delete it. And that was another problem that we had is that when I came over here and deleted the item, we had to make sure that that came back to this and had a nice smooth animation so I could just delete whatever I needed to. Let's click on add, I can add a new item. All of this is blank. So when I just have that, I can save the item and it has no title, no details, stock image, and cost is zero dollars because all of that was empty and then it automatically inputted that because it's uh, considered a double so it has to fill in for price it has to fill in as a double so I can add that to a thousand bucks come over here change this up a bit save item I didn't title I just changed this two things and that's that and then I can delete it so I'm able to add I'm able to edit able to choose the image through my camera roll and whenever I do something it always dismisses so if I come over here you know, I can dismiss that by coming back to my original screen come over here when I save item it dismisses that screen it saves the item adds it to here and it updates it right when I add it uh, we ran into a problem where it wouldn't show it immediately I'd have to rebuild the app for it to add so it updated uh, I had to put it into view did load I believe and it wasn't in there at first so now that works we also implemented these segments, these uh, sorting processes. This is, we have the date sort, we have price sort, and we have title sort. So newest, of course, we go from newest to oldest. Price, we go from cheapest to most expensive. So if I come all the way down here, you know, you'll see the price increase. So we go from 300, 800, 1200, 1800, and then so on. Uh, I didn't make it so if I clicked it again, it would go from highest price to lowest price, but that's definitely something that I could do in the future. Um, I clicked on title. Now you click on title, it does alphabetical order, starting with nothing, and then numbers, and then letters, uppercase letters. Uh, I'd, I'd like to change that because if we come all the way down here, we have T, but then we have I. I is not does not come after T in the alphabet. That's because it's lowercase. So that's something that should be changed and that's basically it we have all of that we have one view controller two view controller let's come on over to the code and main storyboard and whatnot so on the main storyboard you can see the segue that we've already had in there so when I click on this plus button like I showed you it comes up with this empty 
but also we added another segue so when I want to edit something I click on the actual item and it brings me over with all of that information in here and I'm able to change up all of that that's what this segue is for now let's come over to the item detail VC my computer's a bit slow so hang with it um, what I've done here is we had to add UI image picker controller delegate navigation controller delegate uh, let's just get into like the main things that we had to do because all of this code will be on github links down in the description below so if you want to take a closer look you can go ahead fork that if you want to modify it add anything or just clone it if you just want to check it out yourself or just look at it on the web browser I don't care what you do but it's on there open source whatever so up here what do we have we have our picker views picker view get stores all right, so function save pressed. So whenever we would come over here and hit save button, we would save the item, uh, have the thumb, you know, all that good stuff, uh, item to edit. No, we have all of that. So when save press, when I go to edit, or if I add new item, I believe as well, it adds it over to my timeline or my feed, whatever you want to call it, my UI table view. That's what I'll call it since we're programming. And then it saves it. And then it also dismisses. We don't have dismiss function here. I guess it automatically does it, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, I, did, I did this yesterday or two days ago. But we also have load item data, where I think this is when you go over to the view, it loads all this information so I can change the title, price, details, image, and also change the store, of course. And then delete press. This is a bigger one. This kind of is, is easier to explain because, as you can see, Wait, it's actually image picker controller that's easier to explain, but let's just go to here. Delete press is when I come over here, hit delete, and it deletes whatever I chose. If I'm creating a new one, of course it'll delete. It just won't add that. So I can come over here, delete that, the zero dollar one, delete that. So now it's just MacBook Pro and so on. So that's what the delete press does. And some of this code has code elsewhere to help it work. So of course, you know, with the thumb image, we have a IB outlet thumb image that's connected to the actual button. Um, up here, where else do we have it? We have thumb image and some other things. So when it comes to the image, we have image, thumb image. The code is kind of scattered around a bit, but it's in its proper place. So once you know where it goes, you can add it to the appropriate place. It's not like I can just add this little thing and expect it to work. I need to connect it to the button and whatnot, and, and so on and so forth. And then let's get down to the image picker controller. Down here is basically when I come here and click on the image it brings up the camera roll I'm able to choose that and like I said we needed to implement this to dismiss so when I chose that it dismissed just like when I hit save item it also dismisses that so that's what this is done here image picker because we already brought in the image picker image picker controller and then we dismiss it after we select the appropriate image we have the animation true and whatnot so when I come over here it doesn't just like go away it slides down off the screen just like if I save the item it slides across off the screen like that and that's that uh, there's some other things uh, I don't know exactly what I added if you want to go ahead and check it oh we did a temp fetch we added in this alright so we added a temp fetch function so basically we already had all with these two things in here but I had to add price sort title sort that's for price title in order for it to sort and then if segment selected is zero, let me take this line out of here so it's easier to read. If it's zero, pick date sort. If it's one, pick price sort. If it's two, pick title sort. We're programming here. This is basically counting one, two, three. One, two, three. But let's go back to programming terminology. Zero, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So that's pretty self-explanatory here. Sort descriptors and all that good stuff. So that's that with the Dreamlish application. I don't plan on polishing this up any further right now. I will next be working on working with REST and web requests in iOS 10 and Swift 3. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be, you know, my 100 days of code. I'm going to be working. What are we going to do? We're going to, of course, work with JSON data, help understand it. And we're going to work, create an app called Rainy Shine, which I'm pretty sure just from the name, it's a weather app. I've already... I've already pulled JSON data into a weather app before, but let, let me familiarize myself. I'll play along with this. And then we're going to create a Pokédex app. So that's kind of self-explanatory, but I hope that teaches us quite a bit working on two apps with, with the web request and JSON data and whatnot. I think that'll be good. And I'm going to have an announcement on iDev Journey where I'll give you a slight hint. 
I'm currently working on storyboards and mock-ups for an application idea that my friend proposed to me. Uh, there's a lot more details that I'll go over in iDev Journey, but basically alongside this course, I'm going to be working with that. And then once I hit my section, section 11, creating a social network with Firebase, I'm going to create that application on the course. But alongside with that, I'm going to work on the app, app idea, my friend's app idea. So my friend's not a programmer. It's going to be, he's business side. I'm programming side. Although I, if you're watching this, Jack, sorry, but I'm more familiar with the business side and the programming side, but I would like to put one thing off my plate, team up with somebody with their idea, then maybe tackle the whole thing alone. And, you know, it's more motivation if you have someone on your team. But I'll go more into detail about all of that stuff on iDev Journey, which is launching this Friday, February 3rd. So stay tuned for that. I'll go into full detail and be creating that social network along with, alongside this social network just so everything's fresh in my head. I'm learning and creating as I'm going. It's exciting, so stay tuned with that. This is day 10 of 100 Days of Code Challenge. I'll see you guys tomorrow on day 11. And until then, see you tomorrow.